some of the most, you know, just you, you go through a step-by-step story about uh, break-ins and rapes and uh, videotaping taken and uh, used as per- sold as pornography. Uh, just and then you were harassed and then they had drugged you, uh, you, you know, and, and trying to discredit you and you stood up to it. Now, we, we've some time has passed now. They have been harassing you up to the last um, last time we talked. They were still at it, you know, with the, especially with satellite technology. W- what's happening now to you specifically for having? Uh, well, I'm, I'm still getting some electronic harassment, electrical disturbances in my home. Uh, the, the stalking after getting the names of the perpetrators out to the police, the stalking stopped uh, mainly to protect themselves because they're you know they're, there's enough evidence against them where if they get caught harassing me physically. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that would probably mean their arrest and, and they would fall. But uh, as far as, you know, electronic harassment, which a, a lot of people get, not only physically electronic harassment, but turning my lights off and on, opening and closing my garage doors, you know, they can control anything that has an electrical switch uh, using reverse electromagnetic pulse. And that's that. I get a lot of that still. Um, and, and I've come across a number of other victims in San Antonio where they've moved on to other victims who have also identified the same mm-hmm. private investigative agency that's owned by a former FBI agent. And um, in, in the last two months or so, there's actually several police officers that are finally starting to see that you know, all these people have the same complaints, there must be something to it, and have actually had a request for um, to meet with one of the officers that's investigating this crime. Now, whether that will come to anything, it's hard to prosecute what you can't prove. Mm-hmm. And I understand there are the weaknesses within the police department. You know, you can't see this technology. It's done remotely, except for the stalking. And that's why I've told most victims focused on the stalking. Don't try to discern how the technology is being used. Try to get the stalkers in trouble. That will lead you to the rest of the problem. And uh, and finally, they seem to be displaying some interest into the into the organized stalking aspect of it here. Yeah, uh, how how does one become a stalker? And is it organized where someone calls you and says, "Okay, uh, this guy's going to be out walking. Uh, uh, he'll be going to the movie theater, and I want uh, a couple of you to be there to do something weird because it, it's it, he's very disturbed at all this. So just do something in his face. How how does that get set up? Uh, that would be called street theater, right? Yeah. You know, I, I wish we knew that. I know uh, Eleanor White some time ago published a – it was actually a spoof, but it was called, a, you know, the Organized Stalkers Manual or, or uh, True Justice Manual. And it was her, her opinion of what a manual may look like involved in training these people. Um, but it, it seems to be, at least in the area here where we did identify the stalkers, it seems to be mostly, you know, criminal lowlifes that uh, – get wrapped up into this, they get hired, that, um, you know, the thought of making some tax-free money. And more than that, uh, having access to uh, rape women that have been drugged seems to be the draw that gets these people involved. Okay. I've had people, um, I don't know why they follow me around, but people that I figured out that were paid to move to where I am and become my friend. Yeah, you do see that too. Yeah, I mean, you will have... I always tell a lot of the victims that I correspond with, be real leery of social networking sites. And let me give you a case in point. There was a, a girl in New York City. She uh, was an artist or is an artist and was getting electronically harassed there. On a social networking site, she met someone who told her to come to San Antonio. None of this was going on in San Antonio, Texas, that there was affordable housing. She moved down here. Uh, her family had a uh, a home line no, number for her, was their last contact with her, and then the phone got disconnected. They contacted me and said, you know what, we didn't believe any of this, but after hearing some of your interviews and reading your book, we think there is something going on. We can't find our daughter. Can you find her? And uh, I did a little tracing with the help of the San Antonio Police Department. I did find her. Uh, she was uh, in a dump of a, an apartment complex, a little 20-unit bills-paid flop house, essentially, on a bad side of town, and was being drugged and raped on a daily basis and essentially being used as a sex slave. And uh, I did uh, wow. get the police involved with her. We got her moved out of the complex and into a rape crisis shelter. So th- uh, so in that case, it was the fact that she was a, a, a you know a, an attractive woman that they wanted to have that that they saw as a, as a potential sex slave so that's how the gang organized the gang stalking organized around uh, around that that idea yeah and they or- and they organized it through a, through a 
a, a friend that she had met that was that was going to save her from the problem in New York. So that yeah, the the one that comes to understanding and really knows what you're talking about, because you really want to talk to someone about it, and they come saying, "Oh well, tell me all about it." it becomes like Rosemary's Baby, you know? Yeah, exactly. And and you know, and you end up talking everyone in your social circle. We've had this too. Everyone in the social circle is one of them, except for us. And, and that's something that's really hard to to uh, to combat as well, because when you when you talk to talk to the victims that are especially early on in their targeting, if it's uh, done with electromagnetic energy, that stimulates dopamine release in the brain, and mm-hmm. um, excess dopamine does cause symptoms that are similar to schizophrenia. As a matter of fact, um, the dopamine hypothesis used to be the the um, alleged cause or the supposed cause of schizophrenia, that too much dopamine makes you suspicious and wary of everything around you. Right. And we see that in the victims. You know, as your dopamine receptors downregulate, the victims will kind of normalize out where they'll see that not everybody's involved. You know, obviously some people are. Um, but early on, when the dopamine levels are real high, that's when, and I've talked to a lot of these victims, a lot of them in person, mm-hmm. we're just sitting in a coffee shop. Every car that drives by or every person that walks by in the coffee shop is part of it. You know, they're, they're part of it. They're staring at me. They're, they're driving by to check me out. And, and, and that really is a function of, of neurotransmitter change. Uh, and, and as you see a so progression that's not, in the victims. That's, that's not true then? Then, then every, of course, everyone isn't part of it, but they think that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 I mean, obviously part of the gang stalking is they will usually will enlist the help of some of your neighbors. Sometimes, and I know in the case here, they would tell the neighbors that you know we're FBI and we're part, you're going to be part of this investigation. We're watching this person. Some people are paid straight out. You know, some people know it's a, a criminal entity, uh, and they're just told, "Hey, well, we'll pay you so such such amount to let us mount a camera on your back patio facing this house." And that's one of the things I make clear to a lot of the victims. They think that it's FBI or CIA. Most people, there's no reason the FBI or the CIA would want to investigate you. And if somebody comes to somebody's house saying, We're, you're going to be part of an FBI investigation, we want you to help us watch this person, in reality, that doesn't happen very often. I mean, it may happen in some organized crime cases, but in, you know, in a 35-year-old housewife from Reno you know, who's not a political activist, not involved in organized crime or, or drug carteling, you know, that's just not going to happen. And, uh, and and that's why you would, part of our educational process is to convince people that when if somebody ever comes to you asking to do this, call the police on them because they're not FBI. Mm-hmm. Impersonating an officer, that's a federal crime. And they did that here. You know, they told my ex fiancés neighbors that they were FBI. And uh, when in reality they were a private investigator group that is owned by a former FBI agent, but he had provided them with false credentials. Well, that is a uh, uh, felony rap if they can prove it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, so, yeah, it's not everybody. But in, in the case I'm talking about, it, in terms of, a you know, a, a tight-knit social network, it seemed like friends that, you know, um, were had, they, they got, were, they went away and new people came in and then it became like a different, um, like, like I say, a group full of them. And it wasn't paranoia. It was, they were all working together. And, um, ultimately, and let me ask you another question about this. So let's say they get the surveillance in the house, they get the cameras going. What do they do with all that footage of you? And do they know it's you and your name? Like I've, I've seen where they had a camera, you know, a mile away, you know, with a, with a, with a, you know, a strong lens on it. What are they doing with all that footage? Well, I mean, in the, in the instances where it's sexual assault, there are websites, foreign websites that do air, um, you know, live rape footage and, and snuff film type footage. Um, you know, what, what they do with the rest of it is anybody's guess. You're right. That's a lot of data to store. Um, I, I would imagine it's probably not being stored and only used for real-time surveillance. And as far as the cameras, you know, a long way away, um, you know, they have now uh, dome-type cameras mm-hmm. that have very clear images, you know, from from a long way away. And, uh, right. and I've actually done some work with, uh, you know, some of these you know, pan-tilt-zoom-type cameras that actually are in a weather-shielded dome. And, I mean, you can get you can get pretty pretty close up images from, you know, at least a quarter of a mile away. Yeah. And the thing is, is most people that have a camera like that, they're, they've got to be working for somebody. They, that's, that's not some homeowner, right? 
No, actually, those are available. They are expensive. I mean, you're looking that. I mean, you're talking about a thousand dollar camera, right? But that's not out. And they can be bought from just about any spy shop or online. They're called pan tilt zoom cameras, and uh, um, they're available to anybody in the public. And I mean, all you would have to do is mount it to the top of your house if you're if you're on a high spot, and you could zoom in on just about any of your neighbors. Okay, and then what about uh, infrared? Well, infrared and FLIR and X-ray imaging are, are what they're using to actually see people indoors. And that also allows for anatomically correct attack using directed energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other way they're doing it is with brain entrainment, where you know they have a, a pre-patterned um, set of experiences, emotions, or physical symptoms that once the brain entrains that, that extraneous frequency, it will start to envelop it and, and resonate within the same frequency. And then that individual will display anger if that's what they're trying to target them with, or, you know, depression or twitching or, you know, heart problems. Um, allergy attacks are another common one. Uh, you can actually stimulate the brain to produce histamine. Um, and that is, that's brain entrainment. And that's what I was talking about earlier with um, the, in the area of harassment where you really don't need to be chipped for it to happen. Okay, so, you, you know, they can trigger people, like, if they know people are on the edge or whatever, like this guy, this Lochner guy, you know, and in Tucson, could he have been um, z- zoomed in on or beamed? Well, certainly he could have, and he did make some references to mind control, uh, and that's one of the problems that we that we have is because this technology is meant to simulate mental illness, it's very difficult to tell well, is somebody mentally ill, and that's why they're, they're, they're doing this? Are they mentally ill and being victimized, or have they been victimized to the point of being mentally ill and it's strict victimization? There's no way to, there's no way to wow. bridge that gap. And um, I recently, in last October, had a symposium at Sonoma State University uh, where we had several sociologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, a, a former uh, head of uh, the FBI, several other physicians, You know, all brainstorming over one of the things is how do we differentiate between someone truly with schizophrenia and someone that's being victimized to mimic schizophrenia. Uh, And so far, we haven't come up with any good answers other than two of the symptoms that are always present in somebody who's being electromagnetically harassed are tinnitus, ringing in the ears. Almost 100% of the victims will say it started off with a high-pitched tone in the ears, then it digressed to hearing voices. The other symptom is called phenomes, hmm. and that is where when you're trying to sleep at night and your eyes are closed and you're being bombarded with electromagnetic energy, you'll see flashes and streaks of light with your eyes closed, and that's from direct stimulation of the optic nerves. Okay. I've had that. <laughs> the, uh, the ringing in the ears, um, you know, from time to time. But uh, the flashes of light, definitely. And, uh, you know, I've had them also when I open my eyes and I've looked around and I've seen, you know, things streaking around um, in a perfectly dark room. Yeah, and, that, and that, is, that is from direct stimulation of your optic nerves in the, in the eye with electromagnetic energy. And you know where we, where we uh, see that often is in people getting MRIs. If you put a human being into an MRI unit, as you're doing the MRI, if their eyes are closed, they'll see the same thing. Okay. Okay. So some of us are beamed. I may be beamed. I, you know, it's, 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 I certainly have had, you know, the, the visitations, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I didn't want you to come here to be my therapist, but I might as well just go ahead and say what my experience is and see what you have to say, because, you know, I, you go crazy if you don't say something at some point. I've been talking about it on, on and on, and I've had lots and lots, lots of people who listen to this program are targeted individuals. In fact, we have a whole network pretty much of targeted individuals who are friends, you know, and I guess that that's therapeutic, you know, for us to help each other. But it seems to me that my targeting began when I was a ch- in childhood, you know, and it, it's been kind of on and off ever since. Uh, more, at, you know, like I say, some of these scenarios like paying people to become, you know, a, a friend, 